Get Gutsy episode number 127 with Michelle Warner on sales funnels and magic scaling sauce. Welcome to Get Gutsy. I'm your host, Jenny Fennig, and I am so excited to be on this journey with you. A cutting-edge show blending business and spirituality, Get Gutsy serves up a potent blend of stories, lessons, and tips to help you make a massive impact in the world through your soul's work and your inspired life. No more going it alone. No more excuses. The world needs more brave women saying yes to leadership. Are you with me? Good. Let's get gutsy now. Hey y'all, Jenny here. What's up? Welcome to another episode. Listen, before we go into this beautiful conversation with Michelle Warner, who I I had never talked to her like voice to voice before. We are in a group together and so we, you know, we share stuff there online. But there's something really special when you meet voice to voice if you will and you know there's certain people out there who you like really have this great connection with like straight out of the gate and that's what it felt like with Michelle we're going to talk about sales funnels and magic scaling sauce which if that's already over your head and you're like what is that just just stay with us because it's important that you grasp these concepts because they absolutely are game changing in your business, in your personal life, just all around. And I know you're going to get so much value from it. I do want to give you a heads up. She had, Michelle had some like digging going on outside uh, her window. And so you might hear some of that on the audio. It's not as clean of an audio as we typically have here on the show, but the conversation is so great. It didn't bother me as the as the host of the show and we just went with it and went for it and that's something that I very much have done in my business is I just go for it and I embrace done is better than perfect okay and that's also the theme of my upcoming free training it's happening on Thursday March 9th so if you're listening to this like you know pretty soon after it's launched then the training is still coming up. You can go to jennyfennig.com slash done, jennyfennig.com slash done. I, it's been a while since I've uh, led a, a, a webinar. This is considered a webinar in the industry speak. And I'm ex- really excited about this one. I honestly was not planning to lead one on this topic at this time of year. And yet I surrendered into the guidance I was getting from spirit and just said, you know what? Okay, let's go. I hear you. I am willing. I am willing and I am able and I'm going to do this. So we're really going to dive deep on the six keys to growing your spiritual online business. And you hear me talk about the word spiritual a lot because I love spirituality. I love its connection to our work and to everything in the words of Rob Bell one of my favorite spiritual teachers uh, everything is spiritual he had a tour by that name I saw him on tour in Boston a couple years back and I really do believe that and I'm not afraid to talk about spirituality I'm not afraid to talk about how it really does touch everything in our world and those are the types of people that I work best with those who are open those who believe that we are here for a divine purpose we have this beautiful assignment and we are here to fulfill it we are here to fulfill it. So that is the, the root of my work, and that is very much what we're going to be talking about on this free training. So jennyfennig.com slash done is where you can get your free spot. Again, jennyfennig.com slash done. Come on in. I want to meet you there. I want to get to know you and support you, answer any questions that you have live on the training, and just love you up with some mission-critical wisdom and guidance. So I'll see you there. And I will be pumped to open up this conversation with Michelle Warner on sales funnels and magic scaling sauce. Enjoy. Hey, y'all. Jenny here. Welcome back to Get Gutsy, or welcome if this is your first ever time listening to the show. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited that you're here. We have, I mean, this this year in particular, I have the most amazing guests on the show. I am involved in a a really cool... um, 
kind of like Facebook mastermindy type thing on on Facebook and I have access to all these really brilliant minds and the woman I have on the show today is someone I met through this particular group and I'm so grateful for just their leadership and saying yes when I you know put out that invitation like I want to have some amazing people on my show and this woman is one who said yeah I'm in so let me introduce her and then we we're going to dive right in Michelle Warner is her name she grows and scales businesses. She's a strategist who works with online entrepreneurs who are ready to experience the freedom made possible by sales funnels, leveraged content and conversion strategies customized for their business and their personality. I really like that. She's been in the digital marketing game for over 15 years, was the CEO of a seven figure plus tech startup, holds an MBA from the University of Chicago which is one of the world's top business schools and loves nothing more than helping entrepreneurs reach their time, freedom, and money dreams. And when Michelle is not obsessing over funnels, you can find her backpacking the mountains around her Colorado home or on a surf mission somewhere around the world. That sounds like a really fun way to live. Michelle, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. And it is a fun way to live. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Okay. So you live in the mountains in Colorado. I live in the mountains of Massachusetts, so I feel like we have some we have some commonality there, although you're, you know, closer to the west. Uh, western there part is of the some United commonality States. there, though. There's I'm some from energy. Chicago, so. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And then, okay, surf mission. So tell me more about that. Do you surf? You're a surfer. I do surf. I swam my whole life, and I grew up in Chicago, so people don't yeah. really equate that with surfing. But number one, you can surf on Lake Michigan. People don't know that. Wow. Um, and number two, like we would travel so much that I just grew up. I have such an affinity for water, and I'm such a water baby, which is weird because I live where there's no natural coastline. But I have a huge affinity for water, and I've just fallen in love with surfing. It's a way to keep that connection with the water, and I find it to be a very spiritual practice and a really um, – It's a way to keep connection with the water, which is super important in my life. Absolutely. And I totally understand the surf love that you have. I grew up in Florida and I grew up in a beach town and a surfer's town. We had, you know, I kind of joked, I grew up with like surfers, skaters, jocks, and hicks. Like those (laughs) those, that was the crew. I mean, there were more besides that. That's kind of, you know, generalizing, but... But a big surfer vibe where I grew up. I one of my like one of my first ever boyfriends was like such a such a surfer. He literally would like skip school or come in late with the surf was really good. Our relationship did not make it very far because I'm like, what do you mean you're missing school? You know, I was, <laughs> I was the one who like rarely missed school and all that kind of thing. But yeah, surfing is um, definitely that spiritual practice, as you mentioned, just that connection to the ocean, that connection to. Um, that you really can't stop the waves, right? I mean, this is a great metaphor for life and for business. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf or or sometimes just duck under that wave, you know, when you realize I ain't going to catch it. I got to go under so it doesn't pull me under with the current. How did you like, how did you first get into surfing as an aside? Um, It was when we were on a swim trip, I think, out to California. We just kind of went surfing on a lark. And swimmers are not necessarily surfers. They're very different skill sets, even though there's a lot more coordination involved with surfing. But I took to it for some reason. And it's just, I mean, I'm not the world's greatest surfer by any stretch of the imagination. But again, it's just this way to escape and to feel that water going over you. And it's such an escape for me. And I figure everything out when I'm in the water. Um, And so that's that was the pull and the drive for me was just it was an escape in somewhere that I felt much more connected than I felt growing up in Chicago and that's continued even now that I'm in the mountains Mm -hmm. I just feel a different connection with something higher when I'm when I'm around the water and it's funny you know I and it's something about actually physically being in the water and feeling it because I've taken sailing lessons and I just kept asking like okay when do we learn how to anchor and jump in the water or (laughs) I you know I kayak or I've tried things where I have to wear you know a big old wetsuit and all these contraptions and helmets and or even scuba diving and it just makes me crazy because I don't want to put anything between me and the feel of the water. I don't want to have gloves on. I don't want to have booties on. Like all those things um, really, really affect my, my connection with the water and just my enjoyment. So I think the surfing is literally just, like you said, feeling those waves go over me and I cannot explain everything that I figure out while I'm out in the, in the water. It's just a very magical place for me. Mm, That is, I love that. I love that. So how did you get from Chicago to Colorado? You know, that's a really interesting story and has to do a lot with my entrepreneurial journey because I had lived there most of my whole life. I had left for undergrad, um, but I lived in the city forever, 
was finishing up my MBA, which I got at the same time. I worked full time and got my MBA full time, which I do not recommend to anyone. <laughs> it was very, very intense. Mm-hmm. Um, and during that process, I thought I was going to Europe for a consulting job. And that actually fell through because I managed to graduate with an MBA right when the market crashed. And that was became the most vilified degree in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also, you know, got a, things with work permits changed. And bottom line, like, the Europe um, was not offering work permits to Americans anymore in the same way because Americans were not offering work permits to Europeans. Mm-hmm. So I get this phone call that says, just kidding, you know, we know you were choosing between the Rome and Barcelona office, but you're going to have to start in Detroit instead. <laughs> <laughs> Rome, Barcelona, Detroit. Yeah, wah, no wah, to Detroit. Wah. I like that I'm a Midwestern girl, but that's <laughs> not in the cards. Like, no offense, Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, I was taking the job for a European adventure, not to move to Detroit. And so in the course of that, you know, obviously you go through a lot of second guessing and a lot of thinking when the market is crashing, right, when you're getting this huge degree that you've spent a lot of money on. And I had... Um, I had gotten really interested in entrepreneurship and particularly social enterprise that year. And so when I decided to say no to Detroit, I basically decided to say yes to adventure of some kind. Again, the mountains had always pulled me. Um, Colorado was close enough that I could drive home if I need to. I'm single and so that was important. California felt a little too far away. Like if there's an emergency, I'd have to get on a plane. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also felt within striking distance of California. So I came out here and was very fortunate. I was going to come out here on a lark, but was fortunate that before I got here, I found um, I, I found a foundation who was literally looking for a CEO for hire, a startup CEO for hire. They had this very interesting set of assets that they wanted monetized into a startup, a tech startup. Mm. And so that's um, that's what I ended up getting me out here ultimately. Although, like I said, I was going to come out anyway, but I ended up falling into that opportunity, which really catapulted me into the entrepreneurial world in a very big way. Wow. Okay. And so how long did you work for that startup? Um, I was there for about four and a half years. Okay. So your first four and a half years in Colorado, basically, were you, you know, building this business? Yes. And it was crazy. I was traveling a good 80, 85% of the time. We were building some infrastructure in inner, inner cities. So it caused me to do a bunch of travel and it was it was pretty intense. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm sure there were tons of lessons learned. And then yeah. what, <laughs> what, what prompted you to say, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to leave this startup. Did you all get did bought out? Like what was that transition like? There were a couple of things that caused it. Number one, it was super intense and I was very burned out, um, just traveling like crazy. And I realized while it was an incredible opportunity to be this tech CEO for hire, it was also a social enterprise that, it it was both worlds. It was a tech startup that was also a social venture kind of um, funded by a foundation. So we didn't have traditional exit plans and stock options and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, so on the one hand, I was getting a salary for going through the entrepreneurial roller coaster, which was kind of awesome. I learned a bunch of stuff without maybe personal risk. Right. Um, but on the flip side, I realized I'm like, wait, I am literally killing myself. I was so burned <laughs> out. And I mean, I was literally ill. And you know, what's what's the payoff for myself going to be? And then at this, at the same time, it was really interesting. So we were building, um, infrastructure in inner cities to get people online for the first time is the easiest way to explain it. Mm -hmm. So I was meeting single moms who were, um, I would get them online and then I'd come see them a month later and they would have a business going. I was like, wait a minute. So that was my introduction to this whole online economy. And I started looking into it And I thought, wait a minute, these women are going way out on a line, they're creating amazing things with amazing courage, and yet they don't have the business foundations, and so there's a little bit of risk in what they're doing, and if I could come in and supplement that and teach them how to do it um, on more of a solid foundation, like how cool would that be? And then I would also be getting closer to the life that I wanted in in, like making entrepreneurship work for me as opposed to working for it. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Making entrepreneurship work for you instead of working for it. And so what did that exit look like for you? You're starting to see these single moms go back, you help them get online and then they're, they're creating businesses. They're, they're, they're seeing the opportunity and you're you're seeing like, wow, look what you did. You, you helped uh, create entrepreneurs without realizing that that's what initially you were doing. And so 
was it an immediate you resign? Like, because I know a lot of our listeners are in that position. I have many uh, clients who I'll work with, students who come into, you know, we have a coaching certification school. We have, you know, a number of different offerings and, and many of them are still employed full time. You know, and they're they're yeah. straddling those two worlds, and they want to be in the entrepreneurship realm, but they're scared. They don't know when do they quit, how will they quit, will it work? You know, all these questions. And so, take us to that point in time when you were making this decision. That's a great question because it's a different answer for everybody, and it's yeah. so good to hear people's stories. For me, it was a little bit of a combination of jumping off a cliff with no net, but feeling prepared to do so. Mm-hmm. So my whole plan, I probably figured this out, this economy out like 18 months before I left, but I was very, I mean, I was CEO, like I was very invested in what I was building, so it was hard to let that go. I wanted to find the right person to take it up for me. That was super important. Mm-hmm. But, and on the flip side, I was holding on to this belief that I could do both at the same time. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I can, oh, I can get this up and running, get a client or two and have some safety, you know, when I make the leap. And it just became apparent that in my situation, that was not the case. Like, mm-hmm. again, traveling 85, 90% of the time, like, super fast growing company that I'm in charge of. Like it just wasn't happening. Um, So I knew that if I wanted to really do this, I was just going to have to quit cold turkey. But I did give myself enough time to grow into knowing exactly as much as you can know exactly what you're going to do, what exactly what I was going to do. And I kind of knew the steps I would take on day one. Mm -hmm. Um, But then eventually I did, you know, I left without really much of a safety net at all Mm -hmm. and just, got it started. Mm, Boom. I love that. I love that. And sometimes that's what you have to do. And honestly, I mean, I wasn't the CEO of my last company, but I had a very um, intense position. I was a conference producer in my last guy. I was a corporate, you know, I I worked for other people, um, big companies for the first like decade of my career in New York City. So it was like super intense. And in my last job, there was so much pressure and so many deadlines and Um, It was all about profitability. And and so there was just like this level of, ah, um, every day, like every day I'd go into the office. It just felt like so much was on the line every day that I knew that I wanted to make a change. Like I didn't quite know it was entrepreneurship. I just knew I couldn't be there anymore. But I couldn't, um, I didn't have the bandwidth to think creatively um, because I was so maxed out. I was so maxed out. I'm like, I don't even know how to explore any other option right now because I'm so freaking tired, you know? And so it's like, (laughs) perfectly. Yeah. So sometimes like you do just have to jump and, you know, jump off that cliff and trust that no matter what you're gonna you're either gonna you're gonna learn how to fly you're not gonna like die and crash on the sidewalk you know like you're it's gonna be okay but for many it's like they just sit there on the edge of that cliff you know looking and wondering for years and years and years okay so you quit you said you knew the steps you were going to take on day one what were those steps um they were starting to reach out to people starting to share the information that i had just starting to formulate how I could add value because I, I've been in digital marketing for 15 years in some form or another. I had kind of a wealth of experience because of the roles that I had, but I didn't know one specific thing. I knew a ton about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was figuring out, okay, what is the most valuable thing I know that both pushes people forward and, you know, in my opinion, like pushes them forward in the best way possible, right? Right. Um, To make businesses that I personally think are going to be sustainable because I don't want some very quick solutions for folks. So it was figuring that out. And, you know, that didn't happen overnight either. Like I was, I did a lot of one-off consulting. I did a lot of projects as I figured that out um, and, and got it nailed down. And that, I mean, it continues to change, you know, to this day and it's been three, four years now. Um, so it's, it's just an ongoing process of figuring it out. Absolutely. I totally heal you on that. And from, you know, again, a lot of thinking in terms of our community, a lot of people we attract are coaches, you know, consultants, creatives, healers. And I do believe that, that willingness to just get in there and do some of those, like you said, the one-off projects, like the consulting, just taking on that gig to really understand what do people want from me? Like what, what will they be willing to invest in? What are some of those big pain points? How do I bring value to the table? And then from there you start realizing, okay, there were some 
um, themes. There were some common threads here, these links that maybe you could develop a program around. Um, maybe there would be some sort of a product, some kind of offering that would uh, bring more leverage or scale to your business. But it's it's hard to know that straight out of the gate when you're yeah. still figuring out, like, what am I doing? <laughs> Absolutely. And I try to go into it. This is why I'm very grateful for kind of my tech background, because go into it that experimental mindset and like, oh, this is interesting. I wonder what will come of this and not the pressure that it has to be perfect. And you're going to have it figured out from the start, because I work with people every day, all day, helping them shift their business models because they've realized like, oh, I don't really am not interested in this anymore. Or, um, you know, I think I can help more in this way or, you know, you're never it's not going to be 100 percent on day one. So just get in there and start experimenting because you're going to change your mind anyway. Totally. Is that one of my favorite sayings and lesson learned is your business evolves as you evolve. Yes. You're not the same. I'm not the same girl I was, you know, in 2008 when I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do this. Um, to, to who I am today, oh my gosh, like I can't go back. I wouldn't want to. Yeah. And so, yeah, get in there and experiment. Did you ever read this book? Oh my gosh, because um, it's all about experimentation. I love this concept. And it's a very spiritual book. Uh, you mentioned, you know, with like, surfing and the spirituality. Yeah. And this show is really about the connection between business growth and spiritual growth and vice versa. This book is called The Surrender Experiment. Oh, I haven't. Oh my God. By you Michael, built it up so much, I was so excited oh, for you to tell me the name. Michael A. Singer. Michael A. Singer is the author. He also wrote um, The Untethered Soul. It is an extraordinary book. I read that book, The Surrender Experiment. What did I say? I read that in 2015. Cracked me open. Really? And, oh, my gosh. In the afternoon. most extraordinary ways. It became a New York Times bestseller. You know, it has, like, the chops to back it up. But it's just, you know, in terms of that, that word experiment, I'm such a fan yes. of it. I'm glad that you bring it up. And I, I feel like for our listeners, they really need to take that in, that every, you know, everything is an experiment. There's no failure. It's like, oh, wow, right. that was a great lesson. Like, I <laughs> I I know, absolutely. <laughs> and, and for me, it turns it into a little bit of a game, right? Like, oh, I wonder what I'm going to learn today and wonder how, what piece of the puzzle I'm going to find today. And that just, that makes it fun because it's kind of the blessing and the curse of entrepreneurship. You can do whatever you want. And also you can do whatever you want. And that's terrifying. <laughs> no one's going to, yeah, no one's looking over your shoulder like, no, no, no. I mean, for you, it's right. looking at, it's the results. Like, oh, wow, that right. was, exactly. that was kind of a brutal lesson. Or that was, that was an amazing lesson. That was such a surprise. I didn't know that would happen. Or wow, I didn't realize that this program would be such a runaway success. Or, you know, we do a lot of experimentation with like price points and um, mm -hmm. numbers we want in programs. And what happens when we have this bonus or that bonus. And I think y you have to, you have to be willing to play with those things so let's talk about um let's talk about sales funnels um you know that's it's one of your passions something that you really <laughs> let's do it yeah let's do it because you know there's <laughs> so much talk about sales funnels some people are like oh my god sales funnels are awesome other you don't even need sales funnels like you know there's just all this chatter about sales funnels so give us your perspective on sales funnels what are they and why do they matter yeah, so I'll give you maybe a little bit of a surprisingly overarching aspect of them in that there is a ton of chatter about sales funnels, and that's why I talk about them. But in my mind, everybody has a sales funnel. You know, there's, there is this argument that you say like, oh, do you need it? Do you not need it? Guess what? If you have clients, you have a sales funnel because there's some sort of process people go through between when they meet you and then when they engage with you and then when you ask them to buy something from you. So if you do that, which every literally everybody in business does, you have a sales funnel. Um, and so I think that the argument over whether you need a sales funnel or not is a little counterintuitive because everybody has one. Um, but then you get into more of the sales funnels that we think about literally of an email sequence or how when do I offer this to somebody else and to me that's a really and again it comes to experimentation and puzzles and how can I take some organic growth that I've gotten and start to automate that so that I can reach more people because now I know that I have a process that works so how can I take what's important about that process and put it into some sort of an um, automation that will that will reach more people and for me you know a lot of people come in with these perfect formulas and you know you have to offer something on a time delay and you have to do a webinar and you have to do this and you have to do that and I don't look at it that way at all I literally look at who is the client who am I working with 
what is their personality? And we spend a ton of time finding what I call like their magic scaling sauce. Like what is it about you that people connected with in the first place? Because that is the number one thing that people lose when they start using some sort of formulaic sales funnel is they forget that they're actually good at talking to people one-on-one or they Mm -hmm. forget that they're more educators than people who love being in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you drop those elements from your funnel unknowingly, because A, you didn't know it was important and B, you're just following some formula, Mm -hmm. then your funnel doesn't work and people are like, well, you know, that's when you start getting this, oh, sales funnels aren't for me. Well, no, they are for you because again, everybody has one. It's just you didn't think through how to set yours up because when you're at the point of sales funnels, it probably means you're making a certain amount of money. And then that means that the black and white no longer works for your business. Like you're operating in the gray areas. Mm. And when you operate in the gray areas, which is what you need to operate in to grow because extremes no longer, you know, those work when you're just getting started. Got it. But, but when you get into those gray areas, you need to figure out um, what's special and, and how to capture that and how to deliver the exact same thing you've been delivering just to more people. Mm, mm-hmm. That was a mouthful, but I have a lot of opinions about sales funnels. Yeah. How, how popular they are right now. Right. Well, I think maybe a piece of why they get quote a, for, for, you know, sometimes they can get that bad rap or that like, we don't, is because um, that there's kind of that, that philosophy that, yeah, it's like, like what you said, it has to be on this delayed timer and then you have to do the webinar and then two days later you do this thing and then it's that thing. Yeah. It's like, it's that formula which just takes, like it does, it takes the personality out of it and it takes the thinking out of it and saying, is that me? Like, is that really yeah. what, uh, who I am and how I want to serve my people? It is very easy in this industry, when I say industry, it's like online marketing again, the coaching, the consultants, like the helpers online. Um to, to feel like, well, we have to do it like so-and-so or all the yep. other people in this little realm because it seems to be working for them and maybe there's this like law or rule that we have to do it like that. Yeah. And then it just starts, I mean, I've fallen into those traps before. And, we all have. Oh my God, have. your soul starts getting crushed and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it's because it comes up and this is one of my passions and why I've gotten involved with sales funnels is it comes up at a kind of crucial learning point for a lot of entrepreneurs. It's one of the first times that you are scaling your business. And so those absolute rules and those articles, they work when you're just getting started, right? Because it's just the basics that work for everyone. So it's kind of this first really growth of you as a business owner and as an entrepreneur. And I love being involved in that stage to not only again, like design some sales funnel that works for you. That's interesting to me on an intellectual level, but on the spiritual level that you talk about, it's really interesting for me to be a piece of a mentor who's showing you like, okay, I, I, been there I've built companies of this size like these are the mindset changes you're going to go through these are the mm. the steps you need to make as a business owner just to, to start stepping into this world where you need to start negotiating these great areas mm-hmm, mm-hmm. would you say there's a particular revenue figure that someone hits you know within this realm especially within this kind of like industry that we're You know, when I talk about my audience with the coaches and the consultants and the creatives and the healers, is there like a revenue figure that gets reached when sales funnels have more relevance um, from your experience? Um, You know, it's interesting. The first time I'll work with people can be anywhere from two to twenty thousand dollars a month. Okay. And here's the reason for that is it has a lot to do. It it has more to do with the time um, time trades that are happening. So it's kind of where our pricing set. And it's at that point where you've booked out your calendar. If you're a consultant, if you're a healer and you're doing a lot of one on one work, when you have that moment where you say, I can't do anymore because I'm maxed out with where I'm at. That's when you realize that you need some sort of automation. And so that, depending on your rates, that can look a lot different to a lot of people. Got it. Um, But for me, it's the point, it's not the point where you've read an article that says you need a sales funnel. It's the (laughs) point where, it's the point where you have that real realization, right? Like in your heart instead of in your brain that, oh my gosh, I'm truly trading time for dollars and I'm never going to get any further than this if I don't have a check on it. Wow. Do you have like a truck going by you or something? That was, oh, do I? I don't know. There was like this, like, I was like, oh, oh. I don't know. It sounded like there's some. Apologies. I don't see one out there. It's but okay. It's totally, possible it's totally cool. Yeah. It was like the engines were revving. You know, maybe it was just a message from the universe. Cause I'm, <laughs> 
it's just fun. I always like to know, I'm like, what's happening outside your window? <laughs> like, we're in Colorado. Is there some, some magic thing happening? Um, <laughs> okay. It's possible. I don't hear anyone right now. That's all right. That's cool. Um, all right. So that's, that's good insight, though. You know, the time for dollars, like when you hit that, can you hit that wall and you realize – I can't take on anymore. Or, you know, I remember for me, my earlier days as a coach, because I started the one-on-one, you know, like a lot of people do. And I actually counsel my students to to take that approach as well. Um, And then what happened for me was like, yeah, my time was starting to get more filled. And I also became a mother. I have three kids. And so I had to be super, super like diligent and intentional about what I was going to do with my time because I had a lot less quote free time than I used to prior to having children. Oh yeah, (laughs) that'll do it. And what I found was I was, um, I kept saying the same things to all my clients, like individually. And because it was like the same issues would come up with each client. It didn't matter what was kind of manifesting externally. It was like the root was the same. You know, the root around self-worth, the root around having boundaries, the root around, you know, going for it, having that confidence, like getting gutsy, which is the whole theme of, of my mission. And I, I just said to myself, there has to be a better way. Like there has to be a better way to be able to uh, facilitate transformation, which is really what I do. Yeah. And to be doing this like one by one by one by one by one, I knew I was going to max out income wise. That didn't feel great to me because I, in my corporate life, I had made a, a nice amount of money because I, I got a, a cut of profits from my projects. And so uh, that was kind of the impetus for me to start, you know, bringing in those group programs, leveraging, um, scaling, just looking at how I could serve more people. That's really awesome. And so tell us more about the, um, I really like what you said, the magic scaling sauce. And so how could somebody, you know, listening right now kind of have a bit more understanding, like, what is that? Like, because I love the word magic, by the way. Like, I use it a lot. My marketing. <laughs> Doesn't everybody, right? Well, some people don't. They're like, no, it's not magic. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> some super conservative <laughs> people who I probably don't get along with too well. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, I'm like, um, no, magic? It's amazing. Okay. Um, so, 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 so what is magic scaling sauce? And how can one get a better grasp on, on what ours is? You know, it's taking a minute and it's just thinking about why do people connect with you and what what is special about your personality or your offer, and hint, it's very rarely your offer, mm-hmm. it's much more why people are connecting with you. You know, are you a mom who they understand? Mm-hmm. I was just working with a client who teaches video and teaches how to connect over video and she was trying to build a funnel full of words. And I'm like, well, why are you doing that? Everyone's connecting to you because they believe that they can um, learn to connect with much larger groups through this through a video that you're teaching them. Like, why aren't you coming to them on video? Mm -hmm. And again, she was just looking at a formula. She's like, oh, well, I thought I had to write a bunch of emails. I'm like, no, 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 Mm -hmm. like, connect via video. So what is that just special thing about you and your offer that is, that makes it interesting beyond, you know, a million people are out there teaching sales funnels. So what's special about me and why do you want to learn about me and how can I preserve that in how I present um, something that may not be as much of a direct one-to-one connection? Mm -hmm. That's that's a really good insight. So it's like, yeah, if you do a lot of your connecting on video, if you're just a natural on video, let's bring video in. Like let people see right. you on camera. Let them feel your personality. If you are a great writer, then show us some of your chops around writing. And, and I'm, I'm guessing that people could really – mix it up too like it could be bringing in some of their their biggest strengths but also knowing that your audience consumes content in different ways like some like videos some like the written word and and so and and some really enjoy like the graphics and and so it's got to represent your business but also allow like your biggest strengths to shine Absolutely. And then I think it also comes into your personality of how you sell. I have this theory that online, a lot of us can be put into one of three buckets. You're either a headliner or you're an educator or you're a connector. And our headliners are the ones who love the huge, big launches that you see once or twice a year because they just thrive on all that attention, right? Mm -hmm. But at your heart, you just love providing value and educating people and you're writing like 5,000 word blog posts, Mm -hmm. then trying to command, like trying to muster the energy to create this huge launch is probably not in you. But if you're a person who's, you you know, if you're consistently providing a ton of educational value throughout the year, people are going to respond to that. And so if you're an educator, like why try to throw yourself in the huge live launch space? That's going to be this horrible, miserable experience for you. You know, let's build something more evergreen for you because people are constantly relating to um, to how you're educating them. Mm, and then tell us more about the connector. 
the connector. Those are a lot of my spiritual people and healers who just love that one-to-one -one conversation. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of them, um, A, don't necessarily want to create huge, massive programs, but they're told they need to. Ah. Um, and so we look at how can we keep one-on-one -on -one connections in your programs? How can we maybe do cycles of group programs over the course of the year again instead of like one big launch mm -hmm. and you're doing smaller group programs that you're constantly talking to people about throughout the year and that keeps you energized again versus like having to think about this one thing that's coming up and that's stressing you out and maybe they keep consultation calls in their funnel you know everyone's right. like oh can't keep up with discovery calls mm -hmm. well if you can't communicate and you don't enjoy selling over the written word, get on the phone with people for 15 minutes, right? Yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, that's how you're going to sell. So don't have somebody tell you not to do that if you love and are energized by having conversations with people. Mm, that is freaking some wisdom right there. All you listeners, take that in. Oh my Please. gosh. <laughs> Michelle, I have fallen. Okay, there's another trap I fell into. I fell into that trap last year, I have to say. I'm just being like super transparent because... I felt like I had to be the headliner. I had to be okay. the headliner. Everybody does. Yeah. Okay, you're like, I have to be Marie Forleo. I have to yeah. be Kim Luna. I have to be, yeah. you know, all these people out there who I, you know, I appreciate them. I respect them. One of my original mentors was Allie Brown. I don't know if you know Allie Brown. But I do. Yeah. yeah, and she, you know, she used to be that headliner. She was the headliner. Like, that's who she was. And now she's really evolved a lot because she realized that comes with costs that comes yeah. with a price now if you were designed in that way and oh my gosh you just love 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 it then freaking go for it but you're gonna have to have a team i mean there's a lot of complexity that, that goes along with that and pressure too because you got that thing has to be a home run you know like exactly. that needs to be a, not a home run a grand slam you know a grand, exactly. a grand slam and so that happened for me last year i'm like okay i'm gonna do it i'm gonna have the team and then i have the facebook ads and blah, blah, blah. and then like i got hit with this massive massive curveball in my personal life where my my uh, oldest son he just had this major issue that happened for him in, in at school and we ended up needing to he he couldn't go to that school anymore and there wasn't another school that he wanted to go to and so I'm homeschooling now my oldest son oh, wow. that was not part of my plan and yet <laughs> it's like okay but it is part of the plan and it's amazing and and because I have the business that I do I can like work with him you know in the mornings until lunchtime and then do stuff like this in the afternoon and, and it all works right. but you know when I was going through it, I was like, oh my God, how's, how will this ever work? But I was in the midst of the headliner launch when this was going down. And oh, I can't even imagine. Oh my, like literally, I thought I was going crazy. I, was, <laughs> I, I really, it was not good. It was not, um, I just, but you know what? It was this amazing lesson from the universe. Again, talk about spiritual lessons. Like, Jenny, you don't have to do it like that. Exactly. You don't have to do it like that. I actually, I like, you know, when you say those categories, I feel like I'm really in the educator space. Um, yes, I can, I'm absolutely a connector as well. Um, I have no problem getting on the phone. Like if I have high level offerings that I'm going to sell now with our, um, our coaching school, we sure. got away from, um, we did an application process for our first two classes. Then we kind of shifted things around, you know, the experimentation. Now we're back to an application and then, you know, conversation, you know, if we need some clarity on somebody's application before we'll say, yay, we're keeping it very boutique. We don't want gazillions of people in there. It would actually not do justice to the program or to the experience. And so we realize it's not a headliner experience. It's a boutique, intimate experience. And, you know, that, that was, yeah, yeah, was, I'm, yeah, I'm freaking pumped. And so we have our next class this airs will be coming up in a few months um but but yeah i you know this podcast for me is education i'm consistent with it every single week we put it out i love putting blog posts out i'm moving into video blogs this year as well i love it i love it you're an educator i love it okay I love it so thank I love you that you've accepted that and the interesting thing is everybody kind of starts thinking they need to be a headliner yeah but what I found fascinating is the headliners then all want to try to do evergreen, and it is a freaking disaster for them. <laughs> the way that it works for connectors, because they don't have all this hoopla around them, that really energizes them. So it's really interesting how it goes both ways. Interesting. Oh, my gosh. That was really cool. So everybody listening, what are you? Are you a headliner? Are you an educator? Are you a connector? 
and embrace that really leverage that have that work to your advantage you know you're you're amazing even if you're not doing the glitzy flashy launch that has you know gazillions of sales and gazillions in facebook ads and all that kind of stuff don't fall into the trap thinking like you're not pro or you won't be taken seriously if you're not there like not everybody is designed for that and you can still have a very successful business doing it your way Exactly. Amen. I love it. Mm, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is so awesome. So, listen, how can people find out more about you, Michelle? What, where, where can they go? What do you have for them? Um, they can come on over to the michellewarner.com. I have some freebies there. One of my fun ones, a newer one, is my 21-day funnel building challenge. And again, that will go through some of these questions that we've talked about here. It's because it's not the traditional funnel building, you know, do this on day two and do this on day three. It takes you through some of these questions, more philosophical ones that we've been talking about. So come over and grab that. It's totally free. And there are some other freebies there as well. Um, and you can find me on Facebook, same place, facebook.com slash the Michelle Warner. So it's the Michelle Warner because there's a there's a you know you're not the only Michelle Warner in the world so but you're well, the <laughs> you're the Michelle Warner dot com. I am the Michelle Warner dot com because there's actually a Michael Warner in Kansas who um, wants a lot of money for the Michelle Warner URL. Really? So I'm, I'm just owning the the. I, I am Michael. special for a the in front of me. Michael decided to buy some some online real estate and wants he did. <laughs> he's like, there's a Michelle Warner out there who's going to want this. Oh, Michael, that's such a. I mean, you know what? No, no knock on genders. Well, that's such a guy move. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that's such a guy move. I will meet him one day. <laughs> Whatevs. I know. And then yeah. he'll be like, you know what? I'll just give it to you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the sign from the universe, right? I needed to own the thought in front of my exactly. name. It makes it more interesting, actually. All right. Very you tough. definitely are a good see woman. So pumped to have you on here and get to know you more as well. I want to know the answer to our finale question. What's the gutsiest move you've ever made and how does it inspire your life and work today? You know, honestly, I think we already talked about it. I think it was that moment when I jumped from the other job without without having much of any um, emergency stash. And that obviously impacts every moment I do because now I did that and I survived and I'm flourishing three years later. Um, and it did take three years to flourish. And so just remembering that and knowing that there is a net there to catch you um, affects every decision you make in your life. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. There is a net a net to catch you and you know when we make these gutsy moves and that's why I love asking that question plus it really goes with the theme of the show get gutsy is that it, it allows you to remember what that that moment was it allows our listeners to really tap and go wow if she could do it I can do it too and then for everyone listening like I want you to think what is your gutsiest move you've ever made and what gutsy move are you ready to make now this week I mean we don't have to wait and for this like massive you're about to quit your job or you're going to launch this program like maybe the gutsy move is sending that email maybe it is um, saying yes to something saying no to something putting yourself out there having a conversation like getting your hair chopped off like whatever it is just I, I, I really do believe like when we we stay gutsy and when we um, we trust that there's always that net we're not going to die you know we're, it, it, we're going to be okay and we're going to be stronger as a result that's when your life gets really interesting. Woo! I love it. Absolutely. Mm, Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all you listeners out there in the galaxy for joining us. Oh my goodness, 2017. Definitely, Michelle and I have decided that one of our, our words that we are using for 2017 is interesting. This is <laughs> going to be one interesting year, and uh, I am right there with you on the journey. This is Jenny Fennig sending you so much love, light, and faith as you get gutsy. I will see you next time. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Get Gutsy with Jenny Fennig. Gutsy leaders unite and ignite. Hey there, beautiful. Listen, Jenny here. One final reminder for our free training coming up. Done is better than perfect. Six keys to growing your spiritual online business. Have you reserved your spot yet? Come on, baby. Let's get in. JennyFennig.com slash done is where the magic is happening. Again, JennyFennig.com slash done. It's happening on Thursday, March 9th. If you can't be there live, reserve your spot anyway because I will send you the recording. All right? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. 2017 is going to be extraordinary. It's already coming off uh, pretty interesting for me. I'm not sure how it's going for you. And I know that 
we can go so much further when we join forces together as we collectively rise higher in our work as spiritual entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, teachers, experts, authors, guides, whatever you call yourself, we can go further when we go together. JennyFennig.com slash done. I'll see you there.